Hi guys, Thomas Busby here again with another video trying to find out what is the best wide-angle lens available for the Fujifilm system. Today we're having a look at the 16 to 55 f 2.8 from Fujifilm. Now just like every other review in the series, we're going to start things off by focusing on the most important factor, which is sharpness. Starting wide at 16mm, this lens is near perfect for centre sharpness, all the way from 2.8 up to about f9. The centre sharpness does pretty consistently drop down the more you zoom in. Especially right at the end at 55mm, centre sharpness becomes a little inconsistent. Corners at 16mm are great, from about f2.8 to f13, and as a general guide the corners just get sharper the closer you are to that 35mm mark, though they do drop off near the end of the zoom range. The corner sharpness is fantastic at the 35mm range, it is important to remember that centre sharpness by this point has dropped down a little. One thing that's really important to notice here with these graphs is that the sharpness, those graphs are a nice consistent line, they don't fluctuate by big giant spikes like a lot of the other zoom lenses have when I've done them in a studio lab test. And that consistency in those curves, while they still go up and down, they don't have those spikes, really helps reflect the higher build quality of the 16 to 55. Compared to say the 16 to 80 and the 18 to 135, this lens is far more consistent and I feel it helps justify the higher price of this lens compared to some of those cheaper zoom options. So considering price and the value of this lens, it is important to remember that it is 2.8 the whole way through, where a lot of the other zooms are not, and it is also very consistent in those sharpness, as I just mentioned. And so when you factor that in, it, it is definitely up there in the price, but for what you get, it does balance it out a little bit, but that price is still a bit higher. Now as far as versatility goes, the 16-55 to is the least versatile of the, the major zooms I think most people will consider, being the 16-80 to and the 18-135. to So this is the least versatile, but it is the highest quality of the three, and that kind of comes back to that physics question, do you want versatility or quality? And if you combine the 16-55 to with the 50-140, to which is another phenomenally sharp lens, those two there could cover just about everything you'd ever want to shoot and as zooms be far sharper than most other brands prime lenses. However, if you are after just one walking around lens to kind of be a bit more versatile and shoot everything, I think I would still prefer the 16-80 to as a one lens option. So let's have a look at some of the features. It is a 77mm filter or lens cap. It is weather sealed. I know I talk about this every single time, but if you want your lens to last, if you want to shoot in the more dramatic, more environmentally emotional situations, weather sealing will help your lenses last longer. It is not stabilised, and especially when you compare, it, say, the size of it to like the 16 to 80, it is a little bit chunkier in the body form, but it is due to that f2.8 versus the f4. And while you might miss the stabiliser, having such a brighter lens, and f2.8 versus f4 is a big step up in brightness, that brighter lens will let you require a shutter speed, sorry, a stabiliser far less. So there is a little bit of a balance there to the f2.8 with no stabiliser versus f4 with stabiliser. It depends a little bit on what content you're trying to shoot. As far as AF performance goes, like I said, for every other lens, it really comes down to what body you're using. With the X-T4, which is what I mostly use, it's snappy, it's fast, it's as good as you would expect. Now size and weight, I feel, is where this lens actually gets let down a little bit. It is roughly 30% heavier than the 16-80 to and the 18-135. to I personally actually own this lens. I had it for a couple of months, but I got it pretty early on as I was shifting from DSLR to mirrorless. And for me, this was just too much like the weight that I was used to when I was using SLR, and I wanted to shift to a smaller, lighter system. This is very personal and doesn't affect the final scores that come up at the end of the video, but be aware as far as weight goes and size, this is a bigger, heavier lens. With a 16 to 80, it's not too different in size, but that 30% weight difference is noticeable. However, physics, 2.8, it's hard to get bright lenses that are small, like it's, it's a limitation that just can't be avoided. So if you've made that change to mirrorless from SLR and you're looking for a smaller, lighter option, I don't know if the 16-55 to is going to be the wow factor you were hoping for. It's phenomenally sharp. It is a great lens, but it is just a bit bigger and a bit heavier than a lot of the other wider options you can consider. Now when it comes to lens flaws and astronomical performance, the 16-55 to is awesome. Part of that consistent and that sharpness you see in the graphs earlier on is also reflected in lens flaws. As far as aberrations go, especially if you jump in that little bit, just to 18 millimeters, aberrations drop down to about 0.4%, with 0.3% being perfect, 
this lens is phenomenal for astronomical photography. Even if you compared it to the 8 to 16 and the 14 millimeter, they're all three of them are very, very close in astronomical performance, and this sits in the top five. Though the 16 millimeter 1.4, as far as astro goes, is the king of them all. This lens is built phenomenally well and that once again helps justify that higher price you do have to pay for such a well built lens. When it comes to video performance the 16 to 55 is is perfectly silent you get no sound out of it though at 2.8 when doing audio focus it does do this little bit of a shimmer just as it locks onto its subject which is really noticeable if you drastically changing depth like if I hold something up quite close to the camera and then it focuses back to my face you'll see this shimmer like as, just as it locks on which can be a little bit noticeable in that change and personally I found it a little bit frustrating though if you're mostly shooting in a stationary subject like just a talking head like this without that change in depth you're not going to notice that at all if you are shooting in lower light situations and just in your manual focus this lens is phenomenal but for AF performance if you're shooting especially faster moving subjects I would still pick the 16 to 80 f4 for video performance over this though don't get me wrong it's, it's got some flaws you can work around it but as a general AF performance the 16 to 80 wins out when I first made the switch to Fujifilm, I had the 16 to 55, and I only had it for a few months before selling it on. For me, as someone who likes to do a lot of hiking, getting out and doing a lot of adventure and exploring, the 16 to 55 was just that bit too big and heavy and too reminiscent of my DSLR days, and I wanted a smaller, lighter option. But after now putting it through the lab test, seeing how consistent and sharp that lens is throughout most of its zoom range, seeing how small and near perfect its aberrations are for astronomical photography. I see why this lens is that bit bigger, a bit more expensive, because that build quality is there. If size and weight and price aren't as much of an issue for you and you just want maximum versatile quality, the 16 to 55 really is a great option. So after punching it into the TB photography algorithm, let's see where the lens sits. Considering the whole range of the 16 to 55, sharpness, aperture, price, weight, wideness, versatility, features and flaws, and as far as a wide angle lens goes, it gets a final score of 57.94, or 64.89 if you stay under that 35mm and use it as only an f5 to f10. But as always, this series focuses more on the wider side of things, so just treating it as a 16mm option, its score jumps up a little bit to 58.15 or 63.11 if you stay under that f11 range. What's a little upsetting about this final rank is that the 16 to 55 finishes below the cheap little XC 15 to 45. And while this lens isn't weather sealed and isn't as bright, it is stupidly sharp, very, very small, and very, very light, and very, very cheap. And while price is subjective, and I'm not saying this is the best lens for everything, considering price and the quality, it gives so much more weight to how incredibly powerful the 8 to 16 is, even though it costs so much more. As always guys, if you have questions about this lens or any other lens, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you could like, share, and please subscribe, it would mean the world to me and help me get one step closer to doing this full time for a living. But otherwise, until next time guys, I'll catch you next time.